how do you make these damn things work? Ugh. They need to make this phone a phone. Hello? Uh, hey! Hey, bub! Get off my lawn, Jimmy! I know your mom and dad! Hey! Hey! Damn kids. I don't need this shit. I was a knob. Oh, hey! Great rates on term life insurance. Only pennies a day. Hey everybody, Sexy Matt the Pharaoh Wizard here. So it's finally here, the newest Exum movie, and Hubert Jackman's final role as Wolverine, Logan. How good is it? Does it stand up? How does it compare to the other X-Men movies? Let's talk about it, shall we? So being that this is a franchise movie, let me give you my hierarchy of the current X-Men movies so you know where I stand. So number one, at the top, best X-Men movie, of course, Deadpool, freaking awesome, still love it, yeah. Under that, we got X-Men First Class, still really enjoyable and the best group X-Men movie yet. Then we got X-Men Days of Future Past, a uh, really solid storyline, a lot of heart to it, I, I still really enjoy it. Then we got X2, X-Men United, uh, you know, starting to show a little bit of age, but I still really enjoy it, a lot of work was put into it and a lot of love as well. Under that, we got the original X-Men movie. It's really starting to show its age, but it's got a little bit of, you know, nostalgia to it. It's a little bit of uh, just classic, uh, classicness to it. Then we got X-Men Apocalypse. Uh, had some very good moments, but overall very flawed. Under that, we got X-Men The Last Stand. Same as Apocalypse. Very solid moments, but overall very flawed. I actually enjoy it more than most other people. Uh, but I do admit it's got some major problems. Then we got The Wolverine. Uh, very good, but very boring. And then right under that, at the very bottom, X-Men Origins, Wolverine. And that one's a hot pile of garbage. So where does Logan fit on this list? Let's talk about it, shall we? So Logan is brought to us by James Manningle, who of course did The Wolverine beforehand, as well as Walk the Lion. Solid movie. The plot of Logan is in the year 2029. Um, Logan is on the run and living with just Professor X and Caliban, and his powers are starting to give out with his age, as well as some other you know things going on in the world. Uh, while he's just trying to survive and protect Professor X, uh, uh, Laura, or X-23, kind of pops into his life and is being hunted down by uh, an organization, a military-slash-pharmaceutical kind of science organization, and he now has to protect her as well. Without too many spoilers, that is the plot of Logan. So let's talk about the characters. Of course, we've got the titular Logan, played by Hubert Jackman, of course. And uh, he pl if you liked what he did in previous uh, Wolverines, he does pretty much the same thing in this, but it's a much older, much more depressed. This is a Logan that's seen some shit. Um, he's getting tired of life, he's seen the worst in everything, and he can't imagine anything good coming out of life anymore. And he's old, he's an alcoholic, and it's actually a very well done version of Wolverine. Um, it's, you can definitely see the um, progression of this character and where you know Hugh Jackman wanted to take him. And being that this was his final role as Wolverine, he put a lot into it, he put his all into it, and you can really see that on film, and I absolutely love that. So joining Wolverine along for the ride is, of course, Patrick Stewart playing Professor X once again. Uh, after the premiere of this, he announced this was his last time playing Professor X. Uh, so this is also his last, uh, last hurrah as well. 
Now this Professor X is a little bit different than what we've seen before. Um, you know, there's the big difference between the uh, James McAvoy and the Patrick Stewart uh, Professor X's. But this one, uh, it's definitely the Patrick Stewart version, of course. But he's much older and his, bl his brain has started deteriorating deteriorating and he's starting to develop Alzheimer's and as someone personally who's seen Alzheimer's affect you know multiple people in my life uh, I think he plays it off very well he does a very good job of characterizing it it's not always quite there but it's also kind of playing with the fact that he has the most powerful brain in the world but it's also starting to give out but uh, you know he really put his all into this as well it's uh, you know a Professor X that's looking back on his life and trying to see what good he did and also you know dealing with the fact that he knows he's starting to lose it a little bit and so it's it's a very interesting take and I very much enjoyed it he does a solid role once again Sir Patrick Stewart is the man and does a great job just great job then we have uh, Daphne Keene playing Laura or X-23 and good lord she steals this show. She is so freaking good. I mean she's only like 11 years old but she's such a good actor already. Um, last time I could say that is maybe like with uh, Chloe Grace Moretz in Kick-Ass. Like it's that good. Like when they need her to be kind of kiddish she's kiddish. When she needs to be more of adultish she's an adult. When she's, you know, the mindless assassin, she plays that off well. She does a freaking good job. And I'm a big X-23 fan. I've said a few times in videos, you know, I have toys, I have tattoos. I love X-23. And I think she freaking nails it. Does such a good job getting that character down. And is just fantastic. I absolutely love everything she did with it. She absolutely steals this movie and I w I really hope we get more of her X-23 in a future movie but uh, yeah so good so good then of course we got uh, Stephen Merchant playing Caliban if you didn't know Caliban is a uh, mutant that uh, can hunt down other mutants and sense them and can track them um, we saw Caliban in X-Men Apocalypse where he is the Caliban um, so I can kind of compare it to that, and I had more fun with the Apocalypse version because they gave him that overbearing German accent, and he's the Caliban. Um, this one's a much more weary, depressed Caliban um, with a very dark backstory, uh, but I think he does a very good job. My one major complaint about Stephen Merchant's Caliban is they didn't quite nail the look. They made him, uh, you know, an albino, but they could have done something with his face like maybe just add something to the eyebrows or a little bumps on the forehead just add a little something extra to give him a little bit more of a mutanty look I think that was the only thing the way he played him was great but I think if they would have added that little just touch uh, would have helped out the look of his character immensely and of course you got the villains of the movie uh, two we have two of them uh, first one is uh, Donald Pierce played by Boyd Holbrook. Uh, Donald Pierce is the leader of the Reavers who is a cybernetic uh, mercenary group and they kind of get that down in this movie as well. Um, he plays a very like creepy suave almost like Gambit style character where you know he's just kind of talking very calmly to you about stuff that's gonna go down and you're like what's this guy up to? Uh, does a very solid job, um, and I like what he did there. Very good. And finally, we got Clifford from Spice World. Uh, Richard Grant plays Xander Rice. Uh, Xander Rice is the son of the doctor that made Wolverine, and he is now kind of continuing on that path. Um, he plays, you know, a very cool, like, mad scientist to it. Um, you know, kind of old school, but, you know, very creepy, you know, with his accent. I think he did a good job for, with, with what he's given. Uh, I, I enjoyed him. I enjoyed him. So what worked well about Logan? So the first thing that comes to mind is the fight scenes. Good Lord, are they fantastic. 
uh, you really finally get to see what they do with claws and what Wolverine's claws can do. In all the other X-Men movies, you generally just see him stabbing someone in the chest. This one, they go full out, full on, awesome, and they're very intricate, you know, stunt scenes uh, with some good effects, and you really get a lot more fighting and hand to hand and really seeing what Wolverine can do. On top of that, Laura X23 is some amazing stunt work done and just looks fantastic, just ripping through guys. It's so great. The fight scenes are fantastic in this movie. Absolutely top notch. I absolutely love that. And speaking of X23, she is my favorite part of this movie, for sure. Now, if you didn't know, in the comics, X-23 is a mutated clone of Wolverine who was bred from birth to be an assassin. Um, yeah, they pretty much nailed that down pretty good. They, they did some slight tweaks to her backstory, but nothing uh, overtly bad or anything. She really, they really nailed it down. One of the biggest complaints, I think, of Apocalypse was it's very, that one felt very old style, where it wasn't very comic accurate, they just, just sort of took characters from the comics and did whatever in the storyline. Where uh, this, where Logan is a lot more, especially X-23's character, it's a lot more comic accurate and a lot more of the new style of comic book movies, where they're kind of taken page for page. And Laura is solid, just well done, uh, awesome characterization of that character. Um, but it's not just Laura. This movie has a lot of comic accuracy, which I absolutely loved. Um, you know, both the villains, their backstory, and the way they work is very similar to what they do in the comics. Um, Caliban's done really well, except for, you know, kind of stuff to his face. Um, but a lot of comic accuracy, and I very much enjoyed that. And being that the X-Men movies haven't been very strong on that front... Uh, I'm very happy they brought that in, and it was done very well. Another thing I absolutely love, and I don't think this is much of a spoiler, but uh, James Mattingold came out before this came out and said, you know, this movie is just on its own. It doesn't relate to the other X-Men movies. That's a false flag. There is direct links to the other X-Men movies, but it's done really well, like almost as good as... The Wolverine did. My biggest praise of the Wolverine movie was that it uh, was definitely a continuation of the original trilogy. And you can see where it connected and you can see that there would be a direct link from The Last Stand to uh, The Wolverine. In Logan, you can definitely see the link from where we left uh, Wolverine in the future at the end of Days of Future Past and where he is now. As well as they mention other things from other movies. So it kind of builds up this new timeline where some of the stuff happened, some of it didn't. And it's a lot of cool stuff, a lot of nice nods and ads. And I think it's very fantastic. And this absolutely belongs in this timeline. It's right along with all the others. I think it fits. Um, and actually it fits better than some of the other X-Men movies in this timeline. So there you go. One last thing, and I won't give too much away because I don't want to give a spoiler, but uh, the ending... Ooh, the ending. So nice. That's the spicy meat of all. Oh, the ending is so good. Oh, man. The way they end this. Ah, oh, the ending. That's it. The ending. The ending. That's it. The ending. So no movie is perfect. Where does Logan fail? So I did say before I liked the villains and what they did, but they weren't overall really menacing or that interesting. They kind of fall into Marvel Cinematic Universe villain stories where they're there, they move the plot along, but they're not all that memorable. They're just sort of there. Um, there is another thing I want to talk about villain-wise, but I'll get to that in spoilers. Um, but for the most part, yeah, the villains weren't all that great. The overall, like, scheme they had wasn't that great. Um, yeah, the villains, the villains felt a little weak. Uh, the other problem I had, which is almost the same as that I had with the Wolverine, is the pacing. So in the Wolverine, we have these big, you know, set pieces and action scenes, uh, but then halfway through the movie, it just grinds to a goddamn halt. The movie just gets so boring in the middle and just drags down. 
Uh, Logan kind of hits that, but not as bad. Uh, but there's definitely, you get these big action pieces, and then it slows way down, like way too much. And you're just like, oh, what are we doing? Uh, it's, it's fixed a little bit from what happened in the Wolverine. It's not as bad, but it is something I still noticed. And I even remember at one point, it's like, oh, this is like the Wolverine, isn't it? We're getting to that point. But, you know, surprise. And the final thing I had a big problem with, and I can't talk too much about it without getting into spoilers, so I'll just kind of gloss over it, is uh, even though I praise you know, the characterization of Laura in X-23 in this movie, there were a couple points where her character shifted kind of differently out of nowhere, and then it never went back. So it was just like, now we have this change, and now we're sticking with it. I don't know, and it just seemed kind of out of nowhere. When, when you see the movie... I think you'll know what I'm talking about. But yeah, there's a point where it's just like, oh, that's that's happening now. Okay. We're, it, we're not going to explain it. Okay, whatever. So there's that. But you know what? It's time to get into some spoilers. So go ahead and click Old Man Logan if you want to skip spoilers and go to my wrap-up. But we're doing some spoilers now. You ready? Spoiler time. So now I can talk about the problem I had with the villains, and that is when they were exploring the program that Laura went to, they talked about how they created this ultimate weapon with everything they learned from, you know, Laura and some other kids at this facility. And you're like, oh my god, what could that be? You know, is it Omega Red? Could it be Romulus? Could it be another version of Lady Deathstrike? Like, what, what's going, what's this going to be? Clone Wolverine. That's it, Clone and Wolverine. And he didn't he wasn't doing anything too different that old Wolverine was doing. So it wasn't like, oh, he's doing cool stuff because he's younger. It's about the same. It's a little disappointing, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I think that's my biggest problem with the movie, too. Uh, as well as so you have this clone Wolverine that's like military and he's only made for the military. That was your perfect moment to give us the yellow costume. That's all we wanted from Wolverine is to see him in the freaking yellow costume. But no, we're not going to do the yellow costume. It was right there. You could have done it. It would have fit with, you know, the clone Wolverine. Why didn't you do it? What's going on? God damn it. Oh, such a missed opportunity right there. It was very disappointing. Very, very disappointing. Another thing I'd like to talk about is, uh, like Rogue One, everyone freaking dies. Caliban dies, Professor X dies, and Wolverine dies. That's right, you heard me. Wolverine dies. So Caliban has this great scene where he sacrifices himself, and I absolutely love it, and it was a great scene. Fantastic. Now, Professor X dies, again, because if you watch the movies, he dies in The Last Stand. But this one is done way better, way more emotional weight, way more pathos, way, just a better end to the character than we got in The Last Stand. Um, and just, just the emotional weight they put on it, it was done really well, and I, I wholeheartedly wouldn't say enjoyed his death scene, but uh, it made me feel, so there you go. And of course, at the end, Wolverine dies and I liked it it was done well it felt organic to the story it was a good end to what he did it's just a very solid way to end that character for Hugh Jackman and I was kind of glad to see it end where it did and that he did die and it was you know for sure he's dead and I really like that it's a ballsy move and yeah, thumbs up for that. Just done really well. I absolutely loved it. Now I want to discuss where the mutants went. Because they kind of talk about how there's not many mutants left. And there's two things that seem to have happened. They don't expressly say it, but there seems like there's maybe a virus that took them out. Which is a normal thing that happens in the comics a few times. Um, but they never really say as well as there was some sort of incident in Westchester where they did specifically say uh, Professor X killed seven people. 
So while he's losing his mind, he's having these seizures, which since he has this very powerful mind, he just, you know, kind of takes people out and he's just like, you know, screwing everyone's mind up kind of thing while he's having these seizures. And apparently he had one of those and killed seven people and he probably killed his X-Men. And that is so dark, but very well done. And I like how we also don't get a full, hard explanation of what happened to the mutants. You know, it is strongly hinted that it's a virus, but not really. And I kind of like that. It gives it a little bit of opening for your own mind to fill in the gaps. It's taken from, you know, this timeline where people would have known what happened to the mutants, but we don't need to say it. It doesn't need to be any sort of, you know, explanation anywhere. It was just happened. And so I really like that. That was done very solid. I, I like that a lot. And where it ended was very cool too because it kind of leads into uh, New Mutants or maybe Generation X. Like this, a Young Mutants team, which they've kind of been hinting at that they're going to do a movie for soon. So this could lead into a New Mutants with uh, you know, more X-23, which fully on board for that. Uh, but I like that it could lead into something different, and uh, uh, it's very cool. So it ties into old and could keep going if we want it to, and so just very solid on that front for sure. So that's enough spoilers, though. Let's wrap this bitch up. So what did I think about Logan overall? Well, 100% for sure, without a doubt, no doubt in my mind, the best solo Wolverine movie ever. Now, the other two, as you guessed saw before, not, I wasn't that sold on them. But this one, thumbs up, very well done, very cool. Now, is it the best X-Men movie ever? Uh, I don't know. I don't think it beats Deadpool, and I don't think it's going to be the runaway hit that Deadpool was. This was a very dark and you know visceral and kind of depressing movie. And that doesn't really, you know blow up the box office when you do a movie like that. Um, but I think it was done very well with a lot of love. Um, is it better than Deadpool? No. Where does it fit on my hierarchy? That's really hard to say right now. Um, but it was very good. And my overall uh, rating for this is see it in theaters. Now my caveat to that is that it you don't need to see it in theaters because you need the big screen and the booming bass and all that. Um, it's actually more a much more quiet movie than you would expect. And it could be definitely enjoyed at home. But if you wait to rent this, you are going to regret it. You're going to want to see this as soon as you can. So see it in theaters. And that's what I say about Logan. So I'm Sexy Matt the Pharaoh Wizard. Until next time, hold on to your hold slots.